guys, this is prep week. <sighs> one week from today, uh, we're launched, actually one week from today, by this time, it's now 12 o'clock, we'll be in the water and perhaps even uh, have traveled all the way down to Town Dock and Katuit. But, in the meantime, I've got a truckload of work to do. Um, i got a list and list of stuff that have got to be picked up, uh, and so on and so forth. And I'm already putting that uh, What's New corner on the front half of this. I just did, just got done with those two items. And uh, I've got another one here, and might as well get this out of the way. This is my boat numbers. Uh, these guys are the ones who did the, uh, the, uh, the insignia that goes on the back of the boat for a little girl. Uh, awesome job with it. So I just went ahead and entrusted the, uh, the boat numbers to them also, and I've got them. Uh, but that's going to wait till after, after uh, well, whatever. I'm not even worried about it for this trip. Uh, you know, we're going to have her in the water, and uh, she's already got her boat sticker on her that makes her legal, and that's all that, ma I don't ma blah, all that matters. So anyway, um, yeah, I've got to get going. I've got to go pick up stuff, and I'll talk to you later about the things that we're going to be picking up. Some grocery-type items, um, uh, some supplies. I'm going to pick, be picking up some rope um, for uh, the extra anchor that I've got. I just want to be able to have that available uh, as a kind of a, a second anchor for security's sake out there. I've got a, a, a big Danforth, while well, I've got a smaller one that's going to go on the end of this rope that I'm going to be picking up. So, all right, I'm going to get going, and uh, we'll talk to you guys later. And uh, exciting times. One week from today, we're in the water. Guys, I just got this from Fisher Supply out in oh, Washington, I think, Washington State. Uh, boy, they got it here fast, too. So, um, what this is, is a tune-up kit for the faucet on Little Girl. And uh, that, by the way, that faucet is built in New Zealand. And I already opened this in the house. I already, but, anyway, let me get this out. And here we go. The faucet's made in New Zealand, and guess what? Even the tune-up kits are still made in New Zealand. Uh, by the way, that faucet is 50 years old. So, but it's by Finspray. And uh, I really, really looked hard uh, at pictures I had of it and pictures on the internet. And it is a, an absolute match uh, to the Finspray Model 63. Uh, some, I can't remember what the... I don't even... Why are my glasses not showing this? Oh, okay. It is a WS63. That's the model on it. And uh, anyway, there's a tune-up kit bunch of washers and a diaphragm so while I'm out on the mooring I'm gonna have some time on my hands and that whole faucet is going to be taken apart all new parts put into it and put back together so all right so that's a what's new corner up here in Vermont for something that's going to be going on while I'm out on the mooring One thing for what's new corner um, after three and a half years of having an old starter battery that a uh, very good friend of mine, member of the church, gave me. Um, I finally popped for a uh, deep cycle marine battery. And uh, it wasn't cheap. I mean, you know, that was, uh, but you know what, it's worth it. Uh, because every time I go down to the boat uh, to work on it, I always have to throw the uh, uh, the solar panel out to get it charged back up because it drops like a rock. All it, d it takes is turning on a light or turning on the radio and the charge goes down. Well, supposedly, this solves the problem. Uh, and I thought about actually hitch hitching them up in parallel, but that's another story another day. In the meantime, hello, I've got a really nice uh, die-hard uh, deep cycle marine battery that's going to be going aboard a little girl. I probably, again, will wait till I'm um, on the boat uh, at the mooring before I go ahead and do the shift over. Um, you know, priorities. I've got some stuff I've got to get done when I get down there. And this will be, uh, give me plenty of time when I'm out there uh, enjoying floating on the mooring <laughs> in the water. <laughs> it's got to be awesome. So, all right, there you go, guys. Uh, number two for What's New Corner. Here we are out in my garage. Um, this is one of those little finish-up projects that uh, I didn't get to all the time. I was uh, working on a little girl for the last three and a half years. Um, 
a long time ago I did repair work on the really nice old, very old flag pennant, uh, excuse me, American flag pennant that I had for the back of Little Girl. And that was all done up a long time ago. It's on its staff now, a uh, very short staff for to go off the back, uh, you know, hang back away, back away from the transom there. But uh, what had happened was um, this uh, flag holder was badly damaged. It looked like somebody really, uh, I don't know, it must have hit, hit the flag staff. Anyway, it, it, they bent the flange on the bottom of this so badly uh, that I had to take it up to a friend's house and use a, uh, his vice and an anvil and hammers and all kinds of stuff like that. And we finally got it pretty much flattened out last night. And um, so anyway, what I've done here is got myself a nice little piece of sapili, which is a really beautiful, beautiful mahogany type hardwood, very hard. And um, uh, I've cut it out on uh, the skill on the table saw and the band saw, and it's ready to go. But let me show you what we're doing here because um, it's uh, I've had to accommodate that even after ma straightening out the flange on this where the weld was on the bottom you can see where the the tube is welded uh it extends down past the flange a little bit so what i had to do is do a little bit of sanding on it and then i'm going to show you what else i've done here and we're getting this thing ready to go uh it's going to be the last job i do before um, a little girl goes in the water is to mount this on the back of the boat so that i can have my flag on the boat when she goes in so anyway let me just show you what we got going this is Sapili, uh, really, really pretty stuff. It's very red, um, and uh, what I you can see the the marks on there for the screws, um, and what I did, you can see how I gouged this out in the middle, so that now when you put this on, there's almost no rocker left to it. Here, let me line it up real quick. Uh, I, I can see you can't, don't worry about it. I'm going to just get this lined up where the screw holes are. There's almost no, there we go. There's almost no rocker to it. It's pretty stable. Uh, and with caulking underneath, nobody's going to know the difference. Um, the, the caulking will take up whatever little play that there is there. Yeah, the screws are going to go right down through. The screws themselves are going to get caulked. But uh, that's going to be a nice little... Uh, uh, Sapili, uh, you know, um, wood mount for my flag holder, and uh, I think it'll come out really good. I uh, because the transom woodwork is is lower, is is a, a thinner gauge than this is. This is, uh, you know, uh, what part? Probably oh, five eighths. Yeah, probably about five eighths. Um, and the other is about a half. What I've done is to just let me take this off. What I've done is to do a nice little bevel on this and, you know, bevel it off down toward the, the other wood that it's going to go up against. And this will go right against that, that nice wood trim that is an arc along the back of the boat. This will go right up against it. And then it was going to mount like that. The flag will go off the back. So anyway, let me get to work. What we're going to do tonight is, is throw some varnish on this. And um, I don't have my... Uh, I don't have my, oh, Randy, what is it that we're, we put on the, the, the boat there, all over the woodwork. Anyway, I don't have that with me up here in Vermont, and so I'm just going to urethane it for now. I'll sand it later and throw in some of that, the other stuff, um, CTOL. Um, I don't have it, so I'm going to just go ahead and varnish it up and uh, have done with it. So, get to work. Well, good morning, guys. It's uh, just before 5 o'clock, uh, launch day. Um, Things all up and loaded and ready to go. I uh, just went in and uh, uh, got my flag out early this morning, about four o'clock. I woke up and had to go to the bathroom, so I went and uh, found my flag all nicely furled up. It took me a while, but <laughs> uh, everything got moved around, and that's my parents' spare room down there in the basement, and I got it. Anyway, um, so this morning I've got some work to do even before I eat some breakfast. Um, I talked to the uh, hauler last night. He's going to be here at 8 o'clock, uh, ready to pick up little girl and get her down to the water. So, all right, what I'm going to do, um, 
I need to go ahead and, and uh, uh, get back on the lazarette and uh, finish out the, the flag pad that I had already built and installed last night. I'm sorry I didn't shoot any of this stuff. I was just in a blind, nonstop, get it done uh, blaze around here last night trying to get everything done. I uh, uh, got uh, a gallon and a half of, of gas in the tank. I'm going to prepare another gallon this morning just in, in case. My brother says all I'm going to need is a gallon and a half. So I don't know, we'll see. Um, see, uh, it, what he's thinking is that, that just uh, getting in and out of harbors and stuff like that is probably... I'm brand new to this outboard stuff. So <laughs> Anyway... All right, so right now I'm going to just shut up and get back there on the lazarette and finish out this uh, um, flag, uh, pad flag holder um, that uh, that I installed last night. Went in great, didn't have any problem with it, but uh, I need to uh, take all the tape off and clean it up and, and get it ready and then uh, put the flag on. I think I'm going to wait till it, it hits the water before I put the flag on. I don't like the idea of it going down the road on a hauler and uh, just kind of have an insecure feeling about that so all right gotta get to work we'll uh, we'll see you in a minute i get i'll show you some of the stuff we're doing back there on the lazarette well i just got this all cleaned up uh this is uh, all nicely cocked and mounted from last night it was it's anyway so what i'm gonna do now i'm gonna get some I'm, Gone all over it with, um, um, yeah, paint thinner to clean up the caulking. And then I'm going to go over it with some Windex. I don't like to leave paint thinner on varnish. Uh, so I'm going to get the, get my Windex out and go over that and give it one more scrub up. And she'll be ready to put the flag on and uh, ready to be all dressed up for her <clears throat> launch day. All right, going to get back to... Uh, one last little clean up here and then I'm going to go in and eat breakfast early. on that and get the, get the uh, <coughs> sticking paint thinner off from it. Uh, like I said, I don't like leaving uh, paint thinner on varnish. I just like to... There we go. All set. Ready for the flag. Well, she's been here long enough, three years, eight months, and uh, her ride is on the way. So, look forward to this morning. We'll see you down at uh, in Prince Cove. Well, 
Well, the sun's setting uh, in an ocean view everywhere. <laughs> um, I'm all buttoned in for the night and uh, going to grab some dessert and um, just, just get about the business of um, you know, living out on a mooring. It's going to be awesome. So um, maybe t talk to you a little bit later. But for right now, I'm just going to enjoy the, the gentle rocking and, and uh, uh, the way it should feel on a boat, not up on jack stands in your parents' yard. <laughs> hey, good. you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk to you just before bedtime. Catch you later. Bye. Well, guys, it's now 835 here in the cabin. Very calm. Very calm. The winds have gone right down to just about zero out there. Uh, and, uh, yeah, lovely out here. In the meantime, um, I was uh, really concerned because my my good cell phone that I use all the time for communications and so forth, the battery was down to just about nothing. I've been using it all day, obviously, with everything going on. and uh, But I had bought uh, a while back, this is another one of those what's new corner that I'd never mentioned because we just have not had time. One of the many, many, many things that I bought for this uh, this whole week that I'm going to be here is this Mophie uh, charger. Um, I'm going to just have to... It's dark in here. I don't know if I can... There it is. It's all black right now. But anyway, uh, it's supposed to charge um, a whole bunch of things, you know, it, one at a time, you know, and sure enough, um, I fi finally figured out how to use it. You have to actually turn it on after you plug everything in, and uh, it's charging. So let's let's just hope that, uh, yeah, because uh, I would hate to be without communications out here. I've um, everybody's been texting me and you know uh, wishing me well and happy I'm having a good time and so on and so on and so on. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it's um, oh my goodness, look at that. It was down to 12%. It's already jumped up to 17 So we're good. We're good. It's charging. All right. Um, that being said, I have got to catch up on my logbook. Um, I got, uh, as I mentioned, uh, all three of the previous owners to sign the logbook first thing this morning after, you know, at the time that we did the, um, the, uh, the renaming ceremony and launching and so forth. And uh, one of the guys just sent me some great pictures. Oh, I can't believe pictures I was missing uh, of right there of everybody gathered on the dock right next to the boat. And ah, oh, perfect, awesome. I, I'm just so ha happy about this that uh, I'm going to end up with a, a lot of good stuff. And uh, all right, I'm going to shut up and get going because I want to pull those pictures down and uh, and plug them into all the rest of the stuff I'm going to be using on the videos. All right, loving this. Very calm out here. Very lovely, and uh, glad to be here on a on a uh, lovely fall evening. And it's getting a little cool here in the cabin, but we're good. Well, this is kind of cool at ten twenty-two at night. I uh, finally thought of it this evening to turn on my um, tablet and check out my Polaris software. And here we are. And it's got me nailed right there. That that is exactly where my my boat is in Katuit Bay. Awesome. So uh, I'm anxious to actually go someplace with this boat and check this thing out. Um, I, I'm completely. I had uploaded all the um, nautical charts a long time ago, but I was not sure how interactive they would be or uh, how much it would be able to nail you know, where I am, all that kind of good stuff. But uh, this, this is encouraging. So kind of cool. Uh, first time ever <laughs> being able to actually be out on the water and um, use this Polaris software to, to see how effective it is. So I'm impressed. All right. Well, with that, I think I'm going to turn in. Well, guys, I'm up at, uh, well, I got up at 0400. Um and uh, got a little bit of water in the bilge. I mean, just just a, a little bit, not much. I don't know how that got in there, but uh, it's just nothing to concern about, I'm sure. Um, everything else is good and tight. No leaks through the through hulls. No leaks are around the, uh, um, yeah, the knot meter or anything like that. Um, and uh, wind has picked up substantially during the night. Uh, when I went to bed, it was flat calm. 
uh, you know, it couldn't have been going maybe 5, 10 miles an hour. Uh, right now, we're already up to uh, 20. Um, well, what is it? What is it? I'm trying to remember what it said. Um, yeah, 18, 18 to 22 miles an hour. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a rock and rolling day around here. And so the plan is um, I'm going ashore at uh, probably 0500. I'll uh, try to get everything wrapped up here in the cabin and and um, get ashore the best I can. It's not going to be pleasant because I'll tell you what, uh, the, the waves are already kicking up out there. And <clears throat> anyway, so we're going to go ashore, probably not return till this evening, depending on, um, you know, what, when, and, when and weather. So anyway, that's that's the scoop. Uh, i got to shut up and finish eating breakfast here. Um, and as soon as I'm done with breakfast, uh, I'm going to get uh, climb aboard the uh, the dinghy and, and get into shore and uh, let things continue to rock and roll out here because it's just going to get bigger and badder out here as the day progresses. we got the remnants of that hurricane, uh, all the, the wind coming ashore and a lot of coastal flooding stuff. So, All right, guys, uh, I'm out of here. Got to eat breakfast. As I pretty much discovered the source of the leak into the bilge, um, this is, uh, you can't see it out there now. That We got a scupper. Actually, it's not a scupper. It's a, a, a line, a place where the lanyard goes down through to handle the centerboard on this boat. Well, there's no centerboard down there. And there's no uh, lanyard in there, and which means that the water comes right up through. And a matter of fact, we had a problem with it, which I did in a pre previous video. While you're sailing, the water comes up through that, that uh, theoretical scupper. Here's the other part of the problem. This is this is that same, this is where the tube comes down. Well, I don't know if you can see it, but it's leaking right there. See, the water comes right up to there. Uh, when, when, the, when we're rocking and rolling, the waves are coming up, it comes right up inside that tube, and it's leaking right down there, right down to, to there, and then right down to there. That's what's going on. And I can't, I'm not going to be able to do anything about it now because, I mean, we're out here. Uh, we're, we got water level above this on the outside of the hull. It was not about, we, there's no way we can go ahead and change anything in here now. So all I can do is control this. Um, it's only going to get worse over the next day or so because we've got that wicked wind and, and waves are going to be out here all day long. And it's blowing up, blowing up a storm out there now. So, uh... I'm going to try to pack, get as much crap out of there as possible for right now, uh, get ahead of it, and then um, and then when we come back, uh, it'll be calmer, and maybe I can really make some headway and try to clean this up, but there's nothing I can do in, as long as we're uh, in the water uh, to change any of this. Um, should just be grateful we're not leaking any more than we are, but that's the problem right there. <clears throat> I finally located I've uh, just a moment ago, I watched. As a matter of fact, you can see it right. I don't know if you can see that. There's there's uh, drips. Yeah, there it goes one now. There's drips coming down through there. The water, because of the waves, is coming right up inside that tube, and then it's and then it's dripping down and it's going right into the bilge here. <sighs> All right. Well, we know what's going on. We're going to try to control it, and we're going to get out of here. It's coming up on 0500, and I want to get to land. I want to get back on the shore. But it's just getting. Uh, um, nastier by the moment with the wind and the waves. Hey guys, um, a little follow-up and uh, finish up to this video. Um, that morning, after my first night aboard uh, Little Girl, uh, the the winds and and the, the, especially the waves on on Katuit Bay were just kicking that morning. Um, and when I got back into the uh, dinghy. It was completely dark out there. I was I was getting back into the dinghy and loading stuff because I wasn't. There were some things I wanted to take ashore, you know, and so the stuff I loaded into the dinghy and and, and managed to get into the dinghy, untie them, untie it, and start rowing in. <laughs> it was it was a pretty wild, uh, pretty wild ride back in and uh, made it. But I'll tell you what, by the time I got back in, my whole left side was completely drenched. From spray coming off the waves, and uh, um, I was very, very grateful to uh, to tie up at that dinghy dock, and uh, and be back after 
not that com more not that comfortable of a night aboard a little girl i by the way i spent another night out about two nights later and it was just wonderfully comfortable and and you know really nice but but that night that was that was a tough one and um anyway just wanted to to do a wrap up on that uh i was so exhausted by the time i got back to my mom my mom and dad's house i just climbed in next to my wife and went sound asleep i was i was out cold uh you know, I wouldn't trade it for the world. This is the kind of stuff that, um, you know, that's reality. That's what you've got to put up with. That's, that's some of the things that, that just happen when you're out there on a, on a mooring or a, at anchor or so forth. So anyway, just a great experience. I loved it. Uh, I learned a lot. And uh, so anyway, with that, I'm going to just kind of shut down and and uh, let you uh, watch a few uh, clips that I've got for the rest of this video. So, hey, thanks for, uh, thanks for stopping by Sailing Little Girl um, and Restoring. Uh, the restoration goes on. So thanks for coming by.